our divisibility rules. When we're looking at divisibility, as a reminder, we can split our rules into three parts. The first one is 2, 5, and 10. This is our last digit. We're going to just look at the last digit of a number. For 2, if it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, it is divisible by 2. For 5, if it ends in 0 or 5, and then for 10, if it ends in 0. So those are your three little tricks to remember. Most of us know those pretty easily. 3 and 9, this is the sum of the digits. This is where we add up our digits, and if that sum is a multiple of 3 or 9, then it, the number is divisible by 3 or 9. And then finally for 6, <coughs> it's the product rule. If it's divisible by 2 and 3, then it's divisible by 6. So, let's take a look. When I go to do divisibility on a chart like this, I underline the 2, I underline the 5, and I underline the 10, because that reminds me it's the last digit. I'm going to underline just that last digit. That's all I'm worried about. It's a 9, so not divisible by 6, not divisible by 5, not divisible by 10. I'm going to leave those blank. But a zero works here, works here, and works here. It is divisible by two and five and 10. Next thing I need to do is I need to do the sum of the digits. Four plus five is nine, plus nine is 18. So I write that number 18 here and I circle it. I also like to circle the three and the nine because that reminds me, oh, I'm gonna look inside that circle inside that circle. 18 is a multiple of 3, so it is divisible by 3. 18 is a multiple of 9, it is divisible by 9. 300, I do the same thing. 3 plus 0 plus 3, 0 is 3. 3 is a multiple of 3, but not a multiple of 9, so I will not check off 9. Finally, the product rule for 6. I always like to just give myself a little reminder, hey, if it's 2 and 3, then it's six. Well, it's not two and three here, but it is two and three here. So this one is divisible by six. That's your divisibility rules.